Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu everybody. Welcome to the first online ICNA National Symposium. We are very happy uh, to see everyone on this blessed Friday. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in Surah Baqarah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ uh, And when my slave asks about me, indeed, uh, certainly I am near. So at this time, uh, when we are forced to observe observe social distancing, uh, we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always near and will always be near to us. And so for that reason, uh, for this symposium, we have selected the theme, فَإِنِّي قريب, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near. So over the next day and a half, we will be joined by an array of speakers at the comfort of our homes to discuss the ongoing issues addressing the current COVID-19 pandemic and being in a Muslim household, uh, we may be able to benefit. Also, uh, we will be discussing how being a part of a uh, national uh, Islamic movement can better prepare us uh, for situations like this. At this time, I would like to introduce Sheikh Yasser Burgess, who is currently serving as an Imam at the Valley Ranch Islamic Center. And he is often described as a fatherly figure by many of his students. He'll be talking to us about psychology of forgiveness and repentance. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka wa nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslima kathiratun ma'ma ba'd. First of all, I would like to uh, uh, welcome you all to this uh, one-of-a-kind uh, presentation and one-of-a-kind actually experience to all of us subhanallah i was uh, uh, looking for the time where we meet again and again and again uh, for these beautiful weekends uh, uh, with the ikna the ikna convention in baltimore the family always uh, alhamdulillah enjoys being there meeting some friends and uh, from around the world sometimes uh, from the country what a beautiful experience we used to have alhamdulillah rabbil alamin but subhanallah alas now we are not in the in, in a situation where we can have that beautiful gathering and reunion again so at least if we could not get to the whole experience, we can have part of it, inshallah ta'ala. And I hope, bin Allah Azza wa Jal, as we, uh, as we move forward with this program, that we see at least the taste of it, inshallah Azza wa Jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you all safe and protect you from the evil of this disease and evil of this virus. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our communities, our loved ones, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to those who are ill and have mercy on those who passed away. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give protection to our brothers and sisters who are on the front line always you know uh, standing for for uh, uh for the for the uh, comfort of our community the protection of our community ya Rabbil Alameen. may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us and help us go through this with safety and with security my talk for you right now is going to be about the psychology of forgiveness and repentance what does that exactly mean see as as people talk about the COVID 19 and, and the disease and now images and videos are emerging about the number the total uh, uh, the number of deaths that's happening within the muslim community as well and images of the burials that is happening here and there and our people start saying subhanallah that could be me next this could be me and i receive a lot of requests to be honest with you from brothers and sisters from around the country and elsewhere saying hey my father my mom my 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 spouse this and that please make dua and it starts hitting home to many 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 people right now and as a result a lot of people start becoming nostalgic and some people now realizing okay life is very short no matter how how hopeful we were you know in this dunya Suddenly we realize life is very short, so what am I going to do with what I've messed up in my life? Many, many people right now start going into auditing, self-auditing, muhasaba, doing put themselves to the account. What have I done? Have I done good enough? Have I done bad too much, you know, that will disqualify me from being from people of al -Jannah? A lot of people start having this self-loathing experience right now and beating themselves down and not being able to process themselves to move forward. Now, our duty right now, what to do? What are we going to do? Now, this is the, the idea of forgiving and the idea of repentance becomes very, very important. Forgiving ourselves, forgiving other people, because now we realize whatever we fight for in this dunya, it's honestly, it's, it's, not, it's, it doesn't, it's not worth it. And everybody right now is heading towards the akhirah. Our mind right now is, what, how am I going to make sure if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects me among those who will pass away in this, in this dunya because of this, that I will be able to be in the people, from the people of Al-Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the people for those who are the Arab al 
Now let's talk from the very beginning. Let's talk first of all about the subject of sin to begin with. Where did it start from and how did it all begin anyway? That's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal, part of his divine plan is to make this as a part of test. He said, we shall try you and test you. We're going to test you with diminishing of wealth and health and, and, and provision and, and fear. And, and Allah says, then give, give, give good news for those who persevere in patience. So the subject of test is not a new. And there will be no test if there's no challenge. So we're going to have to be challenged. And one of these areas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, been, uh, has put for us as part of this divine plan is to challenge us, what do we do if we make a mistake? Let's talk about Adam alayhi salam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam and his, his spouse Eve into Jannah, Allah Azza wa Jal gave him a simple message. Wa ya Adam, uskun anta wa jannah. Go into Jannah, you and your spouse. You eat from wherever you go. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned different ayat says that whatever you eat, eat, no measure, except for one tree. Wala taqrabba hadith shajar. Don't you ever approach that tree? You're going to be counted among those who transgress against themselves. But what happened? Adam alayhi salam, he ate from the tree. How did he do that? Obviously the shaitan is, is the arch enemy of, man, of mankind and, and Bani Adam. He vowed at the beginning of the creation of Adam alayhi salam that he is going to go after the children of Adam. He's not going to go to Jahannam by himself. He's going to take as many as he can. And that's why when he came to Adam alayhi salam, he says, yeah, Adam, shall I guide you to a tree, a special tree in Jannah? There's one special tree. If you eat from it, you shall have eternal life, like eternity, or that you're going to become an angel. And obviously, uh, who's going to resist something like this? Uh, Adam, alayhi salam, he just, uh, after, of course, he heard from, from Iblis multiple times, and he was swearing to him, and eventually, that's what happened. Unfortunately, that's what happened. He ate from the tree. But Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, he forgave him. Adam alayhi salam, as Allah subhanahu wa says about the shaitan, فَدَلَّهُمَا بِغُرُورٍ He was deceived, he was tempted. And most of us, we understand when we commit the sins, we get tempted. And the temptation is so strong sometimes, when to, to specifically in our time in the digital world, in the, the 2021st century, subhanAllah, the access to the haram is becoming so easy, unfortunately. The temptation is so strong. Temptation is so strong and it's easy for people to fall into the haram and the sin. But Adam didn't, didn't stay uh, long after he, he made that mistake to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned Adam alayhi salam, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam what to do. What's the meaning of to repent to him subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah accepted from him. But there was now a challenge that he has to go through, which is being in, on earth and trying to his best to return back to Allah Azza wa Jal. My dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to falling into the sin and committing the sin, sins are many. And people do things horrible, subhanAllah. I mean, no matter what you think your, your, your situation is, probably there is someone there who has done maybe things uh, probably out of the light, graver and greater than you did. And look what are these examples in the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A man who killed 99 innocent souls. What do we call this person today? That, uh, that's a, a, a serial killer, a psychopath. And he did all of this and after 99, 99 kills, his, his, his heart just woke up and his consciousness just keep you know, eating him from the inside out. He couldn't take this anymore. So he goes to one of those righteous people and he asks him if there is tawbah for him. He says, I've killed 99, 99 people. Is there any, any room for repentance for me? Would Allah accept me in? Now the man, or that righteous man, at least the, the supposed to be you know, righteous man, when he heard from him, he killed 99 people. In his mind, like, are you serious? You think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you? No way, there's no room for mercy for you. You're done over here. And when he, when he told him that, obviously the man now being completely desperate right now, what is he gonna say? Okay, if there's no room for me. Then he, he just got angry and he finished this man. He made him 100. But then he went to somebody else who had more knowledge. That knowledgeable person, when he saw this man coming remorseful, he could tell in his eyes, in, his, in, in, the, in the tone of his voice, in his, he could tell that this man is looking for, for, he's looking for, for, for uh, uh, salvation, looking for opportunity for Rahman, for mercy. He came to him and he asked him, I've done this, I've killed 100 people, is there any room for me for mercy? And the man, this now, the knowledgeable person told him, 
Who's going to stop between you and repentant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? However, he said, where do you live? It's, you have a lot of bad company. Meaning the psychology of the sin. If you're in, if, if you're in, an, in, the, in the environment that makes this, uh, the, the temptation thrive and make the sin becomes prominent, that's not the right place for you. He says, leave this place and go to such and such place. There are good people you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them. On the way, this man dies and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angels to argue over him. Some, they say, he, was, he did not do any good. And others say that, well, his intention was to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah azza wa jal over this man, of course, to, to, to be sent to Jannah. What we mean by this is that no matter what you think you've done in your life, if this wasn't shirk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive that. And even if it's shirk, and you still, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, still you have a breath and you have still your soul and your ruh, you can still repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَرَحْمَةِ وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My rahmah, my mercy will encompass everything, which means it's so spacious that nothing, nothing is great against the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No sin is great against the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the maghfirah of Allah Azza wa Jal. A lot of us today, <clears throat> we live in time where we're very suspicious about one another. People have uh, bad assumptions about one another as human beings. And I, when you go right now, go shopping, uh, uh, for some of the essentials right now and I, I hope that you can stay safe you stay home if there's no need for you to be out but if you try to go out you could tell in the eyes of people there are a lot of anxiety a lot of suspicion subhanallah and now people you know they they, they exercise social distancing in, in weird ways sometimes they stay away from each other even if someone sees someone about to cross in front of them they give them the space for uh, you know many many yards away not even feet before they can allow them to cross in subhanallah in front of them so we have this kind of suspicion about, about uh, each other. And a lot of people, they've taken that same feeling of suspicion we have towards human beings, towards Allah Azza wa Jal. Like they were suspicious about Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Would Allah ever forgive me? Does Allah Subh'anaHu listen to the dua? All of these thoughts come in right now when people are in a desperate situation. And that's not the right thing we should, we should have about Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, وَمَا قَدْرُ اللَّهِ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They would never give Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala the right estimate. I mean, they don't give him the right, the greatness that he that it is due to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of those greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal, his rahmah is great, greater than anything else. Now, a lot of people, they see their sins to be great. They don't see their mercy to be greater. And it's the time that we forgive ourselves before anybody else. That we see Allah's mercy is greater than any sin we've ever committed in our lives. We see that other people no matter what they tell us about our sins, we need to also look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Like when a man uh, told another man, he says in Hadith Sahih Muslim, Hadith Jindu ibn Junada, a man talked to another one about his sins, he says, Qala wallahi la Allah la. Like you, I swear by Allah, you will never be forgiven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said, Qal man Who is this swearing by Allah's name that he would never forgive another person? Ushidukum. أَنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لِهَادَ وَأَحْبَطْتُ عَمَلًا Allah subhanahu said, be my witness, I forgive that man and I made the deed of this man be all known. Like no one, no one can stop you from going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No word should stop you from repenting to Allah azza wa jal. No matter how negative people are, no, no matter how much people they mock you or even put you down uh, to let you know that you, there is no hope for you, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than whatever you can think of. Now, Rahmatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wasi'ah. It's great. And Allah Azza wa even he put it above a statement above his arsh, his great throne. When Allah Azza wa says, Rahmati sabaqat ghadabi, my mercy will supersede, will come always before my wrath. Like Allah Azza is always opening the door for rahmah, for mercy, for forgiveness. All we need to do is just open the door for ourselves and come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how do we do that? That's what we call tawbah. A tawbah has three conditions to be fulfilled in order for that tawbah or repentance to be accepted. No matter what you do, think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy to be greater and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. But you need to fulfill these conditions. Number one, whatever that you do, the first thing you should, you should stop. They say in, in, uh, um, in, in la, la, one of those life uh, uh, lessons, they say, if you, if you find yourself in a hole, what is the first thing you need to do be, so you can get out of that hole? Someone, you know, for a very long time, they found themselves now in a hall. How do you get out of this hall? What is the first thing you should do? A lot of people, they say you should look up. You should, you know, uh, look for a ladder, try to climb up, this and that, whatever, right? 
But the right answer to this, the first thing you should do, if you find yourself in a hole, the right thing to say is the first thing you would do is to stop digging. Stop digging. You're in this hole because you've been digging all these years. So the first thing you need to do is to stop digging. Whatever mistakes you've been doing, whatever errors you've been doing, whatever sins you've been committing, you try your best to stop that. I know a lot of people say it's addiction. I understand that. But with that addiction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing you mercy after mercy after mercy. As long as you're consistent of trying to get out of it, Allah will help you, inshallah. So the first thing is to commit uh, to, to quit that sin immediately and instantly. Number two, once you commit now, you need to you 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 commit to staying away from it, obviously you start having you know, that sense of remorse. Be remorseful about what you've done in your life. It's not like you start becoming nostalgic, like, oh, I wish it was okay, I wish it's halal. You can't do this. If it's wrong, it's wrong because Allah, by Allah's standard, this is haram, this is a sin, you should not be doing this. So you make sure that you have this, this feeling of remorse, that you, you regret what you've committed, what you've done. And the third thing, you do have what we call al-azm, that you have a commitment that you would never go back again to this, to this lifestyle. Never. Now, if you fall weak and go back again, Hopefully temporary, and you recalibrate again, and you do your, your tawbah one more time. Every time you make a mistake, you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah is willing to accept from you. If the sin was committed against somebody from human beings, then you're required to reconcile with them and do your best, inshallah wa ta'ala. And this is where we start working about our forgiving each other. A lot of people, in a moment like now, they just kind of like, they, they, uh, um, they feel so hard to let go that they were being cheated by somebody or someone did something to them and they were never able to retaliate they never took their haq from this person that person you know what this life is not the end of it there's a time when everybody's going to be standing before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so for you if you can just relieve yourself and clean your heart against anybody that's the best for you to do especially in shaban right now before ramadan even starts and if you couldn't forgive the people then at least if you're unable to do anything about it in this dunya then that's between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just make dua that Allah Azza wa make it easy on you as you go through this life. Now for my dear brothers and sisters who always, you know, looking back at their life and they feel so guilty for what they have committed, what they've done to themselves. What can we do? What can I, what can we do? How can I understand the concept of sin? This, this, the, 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 the complex of being a sinner. Because some people, they just, that's it, they label themselves. They say, I'm ruined. I'm a failure. I'm this, I'm that. They label themselves with these, with these things. And that becomes a complex. Like no matter what they think they, they could do, they're unable to get out of it because their life is messy. Their sin is so messy, messy so that they're unable to get out of it. Here now I'm going to give you 10 points, inshallah, and these last five minutes been the last year. 10 points on how you can overcome this feeling of, uh, um, of that label that you give to yourself or give to other people. Number one, when it comes to dealing with the sin, when it comes to dealing with the sin, how can I free myself from this complex of just being a sinner that my tawbah will never be accepted and so on number one you have to admit your humanity and humanness being a human is is a default and humans were not designed to be perfect as simple as that the prophet says in the hadith Kullu ibn adam every son of adam every child of adam will make mistakes the best among those who make mistakes are those who come back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance so it's not about making a mistake, it's about how you fix it. That's what matters. Number two, you need to learn to have self-compassion. Forgive yourself. How, how do I do that? Always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always remember Allah azza wa jal subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is greater than whatever you commit in your life. Always. So you need to learn some self-compassion. With self-compassion, alhamdulillah rabbil ameen, you will be able to move forward with your life, inshallah ta'ala. Number three, after having that sense of you know reflection and, and self-compassion you know what i can do better than this inshallah instead of just keep sinking into the sin i can do better than this number three fixing the mistake fixing that error whatever that is if it was a sin committed between you and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then i need to repent to allah Azza wa Jal. if it was a sin that i've committed you know against somebody else then i'm gonna need to start reconcile between me and allah Azza wa Jal, first and foremost and between me and this person individual if it was a crime that is a different story but still, you can still repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this. But I need to make sure to fix the mistake. That's number three. Number four, seeking help. Maybe I tried my best to do that, but I'm not, I'm not being successful of doing this. I tried my best, but unfortunately, I'm being unsuccessful for doing that. So in this case, what do I do? I do my best right now to seek help. What kind of help I'm looking for? If it's psychology, 
if it's a, a spiritual, if it's a, a, a legal, whatever that is, I need to go and seek that help, whatever I can find it, inshallah. Wa wa That's part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, wa ta'awanu al birri wa taqwa. You assist each other in bir, in performing the, the bir, the good, and taqwa and righteousness. So if I need help, I need to look for it, inshallah. Wa wa ta'ala. And there is no shame. There is no shame in really admitting your faults and go and seek help, inshallah. Number five. You need to set yourself free from idealism. What does that mean? The whole sense of perfectionism that I should not be doing this. I should not be this and that. I'm a human being after all. I would love to set a high standard, obviously. And I would always struggle, struggle, struggle inshallah, and strive to get to that great, great uh, uh, standard. However, you are not an angel. So the expectation uh, that you would never make a mistake, that's unrealistic. And you should have, again, mercy on yourself and free yourself from all these ideal thoughts that doesn't happen number six you have to understand that the sin is a behavior is not a feeling sin is a behavior is not a feeling what does that exactly mean it's an action i mean the desire something when you desire something in your heart there's nothing wrong with this in terms of you know uh, being counting against you as a sin not yet until it's been executed it is an action whether it's something you say something you hear something you do so you need to learn if sin is considered an action or a behavior I need to change my behavior. I need to change my behavior and find a way to do something better, inshallah ta'ala. Like Ibn Abbas, he says, al khayr ada al khayr ada which means doing good, is actually is a good habit, which is number seven. We also need to understand, number seven, that the sin is a bad habit. It's a behavior and it's a bad habit. And, bad, and habits can be replaced. Now, the, the bad news about habits, by the way, they don't go away. But the good news, they can be replaced and they can only be replaced if you repeat something over and over again, over and over again, many times enough that will bury the, the old habits down there. And inshallah, you'll find yourself, you know, set yourself free with these good habits. Number eight, when you look at the sin, some people look at the sin as a challenge. Others look at it as an obstacle. So if you think of the sin as an obstacle, you will never move forward. Like, you know what? I'm doomed. That's it. The doors of mercy are closed in front of me. My sin is too great to be forgiven. That's it. That becomes, unfortunately, uh, a mean for people to lose the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you look at the sin as a, um, as a challenge, uh, in this case, you will always try to your best to overcome that. And if that sin or that challenge doesn't actually kill you, it's going to make you stronger, inshallah ta'ala. In the hadith of the lady who used to steal in, Ma in Medina, and then she was punished because she was from the, from a very well-known family, like she was an elitist. But she still was punished. And because of that punishment, Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, قالت, ثم حسنا إسلامها. She became such a righteous woman after that. Like sometimes, subhanAllah, because of these mistakes that we do, it, it provokes a, a repentance in our heart, the desire to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal, that we make commitment, we would never go back to that lifestyle. So you never know. Take it as a, as a challenge, not as an obstacle. Number nine, Number nine, avoid triggers. What does that mean? If you know that your sins are being uh, uh, provoked because of certain companionship, certain lifestyle, certain locations or spaces or places, avoid all of that. As much as you can, try to avoid that. And number, number 10, and the last one, remember to do what we call al-i'tisamu billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you always find shelter and refuge with Allah azza wa jal. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ladina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqatih. That you always fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it should be feared. Qal wa'atasimu bi hablillahi jami'an. And you find i'tisam, which means you hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa man ya'atasim billahi faqad hudiya ila saratul mustaqeen. And whoever finds shelter and, and finds a, a, a protection with Allah azza wa jal, faqad hudiya ila saratul mustaqeen, shall be guided to a straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Give us the ability to see this path and go through with it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of us to give us that sense of, uh, of rahmah and mercy in our hearts. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins, to conceal our sins, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to the speech and follow the rest of it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this moment that Allah azza wa jal keep you all safe, keep you all protected and guarded. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give those who are sick a quick shifa and recovery shifa that will leave no trace of illness, Ya Rabbil Alameen. والحمد لله وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم امين جزاك الله خير شيخ سو 
we are taking questions. Uh, we have a few minutes left, so you can uh, feel free to type your questions in the live comments, uh, and I will be asking the uh, Sheikh the questions. So, Sheikh, so far, um, the, uh, Jazakallah khair for going through those 10 points about uh, how to deal with sins. One question was about how do I know that I've forgiven someone? I've said it to them, but are there any signs? Well, there is no way you know you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give your sins. And that should be actually a motivation and an incentive for you to keep trying and trying and trying and trying. You never actually stop asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. That's the whole point. A lot of people, they think that, you know what, if, uh, if because if you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven your sin, that's it. You're probably going to stop uh, trying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to, see, to hear your voice when you ask for his mercy or for his rahmah. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala in Madarj al-Salikin, he says under the chapter of Al-Muhasaba, self-accountability, uh, he was talking about what is better for a person, to continue thinking about the sin or not? Like, is it good for people to th keep thinking about the sin that they've committed or should we just stop, you know, thinking about it at all? And he gave different opinions, of course, from different scholars. His, his personal uh, opinion or suggestion for he goes, it depends on the condition of the person. If the person uh, uh, becoming so um, overexcited and overproud of their... Uh, repentance and doing well after they've messed up in their life and so to the extent what they become arrogant he said that is a person that needs to start thinking of their sin because they should not forget what they've done before because that will humble them but if a person alhamdulillah is in the right path i mean they're very spiritual they're engaging with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without that sense of arrogance from them at all in this case he says this person should not think about the sin Instead, they should think about Allah subhanahu wa mercy and doing more of the good deed, inshallah. So people should not really worry themselves about did Allah accept from me or not. What you need to do is know that you do your part. And what is my part? Is always repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu Yeah. Uh, so just to uh, uh, add to that question, I think this individual was asking about when you're dealing with someone else. Mm -hmm. um, if they, I guess um, the question was, how do I know if, I have forgiven that other person. I have told them that I've forgiven them, but are there signs for me to know that I've, uh, I guess, to let it go? Have I let it go? Uh, well, but, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Eventually, honestly, this is something in your hand. Uh, if someone did something wrong against you and they came to you and they asked you, um, you know, for forgiveness, it's up to you to forgive them or not. And if you've done something wrong against somebody and you went to them to seek for forgiveness, uh, the same thing too. So Allah subhanahu wa in Surah Al Imran, Wal Kadimin al Ghayb, Wal Afin an Nas, Wallahi Hubbul Muhsirin. There are three steps for this sense of relief, feeling, feeling that you've done your part. Okay. Number one, you control your anger, you strain your anger. So every time you think about it, every time, every time you see this person, if that provokes, you know, anger in you, you probably do not actually do the right thing. So you need to control, restrain your anger. Some people they do that, but then they don't forgive. As Allah says, Wal Afin an Nas, you should forgive the people. Some people, they do control their anger, forgive the people, and then he says, Wallahu yuhibbu al-muhsineen, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are muhsineen, which means those who always do good and well uh, with their deeds. What is better than forgiving? Forgetting. And how do I forget that? Like acting as this never happened to me. Yeah. Do I have to do that? No, that's optional. That is optional, but it's still recommended. It's highly recommended that we forgive, forget, and we move on. Wallahu a'ala. Uh, next question, uh, is it okay to some uh, forgive someone who has caused us so much harm, like a tyrant? Um, now, we, there's a big difference between a sin and a crime. Keep that in mind. A sin, if someone commits a sin between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, whether doing it publicly or doing it actually privately, it's still considered a sin. But a crime, if someone makes a sin, that has to do with other people's rights and other people's, you know, harming other people as well. So that is now a different story. These people need to be, to be brought to justice if possible, if we can. Now dealing with tyrants and so on, what can we do? If it's not under our control to help with that, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just give us the ability, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to at least, you know, to see better times in, in our lives and, and, and see justice being served against these people. But we know as believers, if justice was not served in this dunya against these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of it on the day of judgment. Wallahu
Uh, so that's the time uh, we have with you today. Uh, again, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh, for your time. Uh, I hope everybody at home is able to enjoy uh, and benefit from this. Also, as I made an appeal at the beginning of the program, uh, please take a moment to go to www.icna.org slash donate. Uh, we did take a, a significant financial loss from having to postpone the ICNA convention. Uh, and this is not a complete replacement of it, but it is at least a way for us to be together during this pandemic and have our mashayikh share words of advice and wisdom uh, with us. So, Jazakallah khair. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.